Upon leaving this world, the ancient ruler and ancestor of the Turks, Oz Khan, had left behind six sons. These six children of his would take rulership of four tribes each, and in total, there would be 24 branches of Oz tribes. And so, the Oz Turks kingdoms would spread all throughout Asia, Africa, and even Europe. Their might was heard in all four corners of the world, and their valor and bravery was renowned. Many of the greatest empires in history would be from their lineage. In this video, we will learn about their traditions, cultures, laws, social norms, and ancient history that ultimately made them become the famous Oz Turks, whom history itself has exalted. Born to become warriors, the Oz Turks were known to have been trained in sword fighting, archery, and horse riding from a very young age. Along with that, they were taught to highly respect and protect their laws, cultures, traditions, and flags above everything else, as they were the essentials of the foundations of the Oz tribes. And so, when these young Turkmen would grow older and reach the age of maturity, they would become Alps. The word Alp itself meant hero, and would refer to the male warriors of the Turkish Oz tribes. These Alps would in turn be under the command of the Alpashi, meaning the chief Alp. This great title and position would be given to the most highly esteemed, commendable warrior of the tribe, who would train the Alps and utmost obediently execute the orders of the Bey of the tribe. The word Bey was an honorific title given to the chieftains of the Oz tribes, whom were chosen through noble lineage and the voting council of the elders. Thus. The elected chieftain would assume command of the entire tribe and would be considered responsible for the safety and well-doing of his people. However, those warriors who fought holy wars solely for the sake of God were called the Razis. Moreover, anyone from the Alps to the bays of the tribes could earn this title as it was sought through self-sacrifice and nobility, as opposed to wealth and glory. This is without a doubt the greatest and most honorable title given to the Oz Turks. Though the men of the Turkish Oz tribes were considered to be the backbones of leadership and organization, it is notable to say that women were also said to have been expert horse riders, archers, and athletes. Moreover, they produced some of the world's most famous carpets with magnificent architecture, eloquence, and design. These carpets were sewn together by the women of the tribe, whom had mastered the art to the extent that their carpets had reached great popularity and demand in the trade industry. Tribal allegiance and ties of kinship were of much significance in Oz culture. Marriages were often arranged among territorial groups so that neighboring groups could increase their ties of kinship and become close relatives. For Oz Turks, marriage was a great organizing principle that extended territorial unity and created alliances. Also, ceremonies were of great importance in Oz tradition as they would minimize social dangers and strengthen the bonds of the tribe folks. Such ceremonies would be done for celebrating marriages, saluting of births, mourning the dead, and most notably, congratulating those who reached the age at which they would become elves. For many centuries, Oz Turks were known to have been fearless, nomadic tribesmen that possessed certain military advantages that other societies did not have in particular mobility. On top of that, they lived in yurts, which were round, portable tent-like shelters which were erected on wooden poles and built with hand-woven textiles. The Turkish Oz tribes also had herds of cattle, which in turn grant them great means of sustenance wherever they traveled so long as they remained on fertile lands. Furthermore, the Oz Turks also consisted of skilled merchants, craftsmen, and blacksmiths who contributed well to the livelihood of the tribe. What was the religion of the Oz Turks? Well, Oz Han was born at a time when majority of the people had lost their monotheistic faith. However, he would grow up and become the protector of the monotheistic faith, spreading it to many faraway lands, preaching the people to worship one god. Though not all of the Oz Turks remained monotheistic, as shamanism and tengerism remained somewhat popular, but after the arrival of Islam during the 7th century, the Oz Turks had rapidly been converting to Islam. And so, by the 10th century, the Oz Turks were referred as Muslim Turkmen. In fact, 
Oz warriors would serve in almost all of the Islamic armies in the Middle East, Rum, and even Spain and Morocco. And so, they would remain steadfast on their religion to the extent that they would later be known as the protectors of the Islamic world, Khalifas of the Muslims. As time passed by, the Oz Turks became masters of statecraft and would emerge as some of the greatest empire builders history has ever seen. Among the great states they would establish were the Khwarazm state from the Big Dili Oz tribe, the Sanjuk Sultanate from the Kinik Oz tribe, the Kara Kuyunlu Beylik from the Yeva Oz tribe, the Ak Kuyunlu Confederation from the Bayundur Oz tribe, the Afsharid Principality from the Afshar Oz tribe, and of course, the Great Ottoman Empire from the Kai tribe. All of the above mentioned dynasties would expand over the course of several countries and even present day continents. The last of the existing Turkish Oz dynasties were the Ottomans, from the lineage of Usman Ghazi. Their more modernized state dissolved in 1922, marking the end of the legendary Oz Turks. However, it did not mark the end of their legacy. This was the history of the children of Oz Khan, fathers of conquerors, the valiants of the Turks. Many of their legends, traditions, and social norms have been recorded in the famous book of Deed Korkut, which is said to have been preserved for countless centuries. And today, many of the descendants of the Oz Turks reside in Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Turkmenistan. The epics and folk tales of their forefathers have never been forgotten.